1 John 5, verse 4. I want us to look at this. He says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. We could stop right there. But we're not going to. That is a question to you this morning. Are you born of God this morning? Hey, that sounds good. I'm preaching to the choir this morning then. But if you're not... You need to be born of God this morning to overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? You might ask, why do I need to be an overcomer? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, which is a question mark, but I'm going to put an exclamation point there because I just did. Let's read a little bit more. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And this is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. May God bless the reading of his word. In Matthew Henry, this was just captivating to me, and it struck home as I was as I was reading this, and verse starting at verse four, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Matthew Henry says, as he writes, he says, It is the world that lies in our way to heaven. And is the great impediment to our entrance therein. Think of that for just a second. This world is in our way of heaven. And it's our impediment that lies therein. I'm not getting up a bunch of Kool-Aid or anything like that or getting a bus ride there right now. You hear what I'm saying. But I want you to think about that for just a second. What separates us, if you are an overcomer, if you have been born again, what separates us from the presence of physical presence or being in the presence of God is the gate that we must pass through one day unless the rapture takes place, and that is death. Overcoming this world, we go go from, we part from this life through death into the presence of the, of, the God, of the Lord. Because the Bible says um, it is pointed unto man once to die and, and then judgment. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, Scripture tells us as well. So what lies in between here and there is the, is the, is the doorway of death. See, that used to scare a whole lot of people. Kind of scares some of us today too. But I'm talking about before Christ. See, by faith, as it says later on here in, in, in Scripture, as that that I read, it's oh, even our faith at the end of that verse. In the Old Covenant, by faith they believed what they were doing was what was required by God because God showed up on the scene and there was many visible manifestations upon God and using the tabernacle as a wonderful example of that. The tabernacle, you had the Shekinah glory of God that would shine up from the Holy of Holies up into the heavens and people would see the visible manifestation of God and they knew that God was there. And that's why Paul in his writings, when we read Romans through Philemon, etc., where he says the Jews require a sign because they had to see that God was there. They did not and they were not fortunate as we to have what we have across our laps here, which is your Bible. All right, Jesus... They were looking forward to the cross of Christ. They were looking forward to the Messiah of the Messiah coming. Then we see throughout the Old Testament, which is a history of the Jewish people, of, of how they were disobedient unto God, which we can parallel ourselves with them as well. They are, we are not unlike them other than they are God's chosen people. But we, if we're born again, if we're saved, we are God's chosen people as well. Okay, how disobedient they were. God told them not to do this. 
and they did it anyway. What do we do? God tells us not to do it, and we do it anyway. We're just like them. All we've got to do is look back. Those, we, we, we need to learn from our history. If you don't learn from history, you will repeat what you have done and what you do. So we need to look back and learn from the messes that we've made and live a better life, do more of what God has, had us, to, has us to do and requires for us to do, etc., etc., etc. But with all that being said, they did not have the Word of God. They were looking forward to, excuse me, they had the Old Covenant. They did not have the New Covenant or the New Testament telling what Jesus, that Jesus came, that Jesus died, that He rose again. So by faith they believed as they would take those animals to have them sacrificed at the tabernacle, at the temple, and, and, and so on, looking forward to the Messiah coming. Then all of a sudden, He fulfills prophecy. He fulfills the Old Covenant. He fulfills what Scripture says, that He would be born in the house of Bethlehem, that Mary would come in riding in on the fold of an ass, and how, how He would be born, when He would be born, and all those things, He fulfilled all of those. He lived a life that was perfect, that we could not live. He lived that life for us. He died. He, he came he, as He prayed to the Father. He says, God, Father, not my will, but thine will be done. He says, if there's any way for this cup to pass from me, let it pass from me. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done, because he knew that there was no other way. What way was that? That was for you and for me to be an overcomer. Because if we could overcome this world by our works, if we could overcome this life by our works, if we could do it by our works alone, Jesus would not have had to come but we can't. And thank God He did. And thank God He can. And thank God I received the blessings of that. And not only me, but you, because we are overcomers because of what Jesus has done for us. He came and He lived a life that we couldn't live. A substitutionary life that we couldn't live. He came an innocent man and they brutally killed Him when I deserved it. When you deserved it. But thank God He didn't pour His wrath out upon me. Thank God He didn't give me what I was due. Thank God He was merciful to me. Thank God He was gracious to me. Me a sinner. A horrible sinner. And He showed His mercy upon me. When He forgave me of my sin. And that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit this morning. Is overcoming. We all make a mess. Don't tell me you don't and you ain't got to raise your hand to show me that you did. There's not one of us in here that there's nothing that we could go back that we wouldn't erase if we could. Each and every one of us that has a breath within our body. But you know what Scripture tells us? I can't fix yesterday because it's already gone, ain't it? But I can remember what I did and stop it. I mean, not do it again. I can't take, I can't fix what I did tomorrow because it hadn't got here yet and I haven't, I haven't done it or lived it or whatever the case may be. But I got right now. And that's all we're promised. Jesus says, don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow and ain't got here yet. Sufficient is the stuff that you've got to take care of today. He so we need to take care of today. Let's live today. And how are we to live today? See, we, we, we are overcomers. Jesus has overcame death, hell, and the grave for you and me. He has given us provision. He gives you and me provision. He gives us strength. He gives us the ability to look unto Him. He gives us guidance. He gives us knowledge. He gives us wisdom. He gives us His Word. He gives us these things. He gives us His promises to stand on and to live on. So let's walk in them today. Like Peter as an example. Peter getting out of the boat. How? In the verse 4. By faith. What did the rest of them do? They sat there. But Peter didn't. He got up. He said, if it's you, God, bid me to come unto you. And he did. He says, come, Peter. And Peter stepped out. He was looking at Jesus. And he was walking toward him by faith because it's not right for a man or a woman to get out of a boat and start walking on the water to start with, is it? It's supernatural. 
It's a miracle. But that's who we serve is a supernatural and a miraculous God. So Jesus says, come on, and he did, and he started looking at Jesus. That's today. That's right now. He gets out and he looks at Jesus. And he's got his eyes on him and he's walking toward him. And then what does the, what does the, what the Scripture says? Then he saw the winds and then he saw the waves. So what's he doing? That's right, he's got his eye off of Jesus. He's looking at yesterday. And he's worried about what he's going to do tomorrow. And he's got it. Well, if I, here's what I did yesterday. I don't need to do that, or I needed to have done this. I wish I'd have done more of these, that, so on and so forth, such and such. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this, that, or the other. Uh, and it's got our mind what and where? All over the place and not thinking about God. And got our eyes off of Jesus. Today, we walk and keep our eyes on Jesus right now. Because that's what we got right now. Heard a couple of testimonies this morning, or, or praise, or pra, uh, well, pra, praise reports of total vehicles, and they're getting up and walking away. Thank God for that. What if something else happened? The alternative. Well, it got, wasn't God's will, and it wasn't their time. But what happened last Sunday? Were they in church? Did they hear what the preacher had to say? What is their life right like with God? Are they saved? Are they not saved? You know the answers to those questions you that, that, uh, that gave the praise report, etc. But what, what about last Sunday? Not about necessarily that Sunday, but the day before. Where was their heart? Where was their mind? And where was their life with the Lord? We're overcomers. That, and the uh, reason I'm saying all that is to say this, that the devil tries to get our mind off of Jesus. He is a deceiver. He is a divider. He is a liar. He is the father of it. He's the author of confusion. He is the Lord of the flies. Okay, I'm not giving him any praise. I'm not giving him any credit. What I'm doing is telling you who he is. He's a liar. And his feet stink. He is our enemy. See, the government today will not say that the Islamists are te- or that the terrorists are Islamists and they're our enemy. Guess what? They are Islamists and they're terrorists and they're our enemy. If you do not know who your enemy is, how can you fight them? Well, I'm telling you, the devil is a liar and he's the father of it. He is a confuser. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to steal. He comes to break up homes. He comes to break up families to take kids away. He comes to do, bust churches up. He can't stand for Jesus to receive praise, honor, and glory. He can't stand for a group of men to get out there and rake the yards and make it look good. He can't stand those things. So what does he do? He tries to get our eyes off of Jesus. Bless God, I wish I had a car like brother so-and-so or a truck like sister so-and-so. Why ain't I got a, a, a bobcat where I can cut bushes and trees down and so on? It, that kind of stuff. Envy, pride, strife. We talked about it in our Sunday school class this morning. Anything to get our eyes off of Jesus and the focus of, of Jesus. Pride of the eye, pride of life, and lust of the flesh. That's what he does. To mess with us, to get our eyes off of God. And guess what? He's been doing it a long time. And he's good at it. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Why? Because he's an overcomer. Jesus Christ overcame death, hell, and the grave, and he overcame this world. And let's get back to where, where Jesus was. As he, he was born, as Scripture said that he was to be born. He lived the way Scripture said that he was to live. And he died exactly as Scripture had and said that he would die written 600 years prior to him dying that way. Read the psalm, the the 53rd psalm, that tells about how he would be crucified. The 22nd psalm as well tells it how he would die. That is amazing and it is unique. You know, the, the Jews did not practice crucifixion. They stoned people. So if God is in charge of the most minute detail that the Romans took Jerusalem over, took Israel over, and that is their form of execution, is of crucifixion. 
so that Scripture would be fulfilled. And it would also that he would die and he would not have a bone broke. Remember when he was hanging from the cross and he, and he gave up the ghost. They didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. He died. He laid down his life. And when the Roman soldiers came to, uh, to break his legs because, so they would asphyxiate, they'd get out of breath, because that is, that's how cruel they were. Instead of just killing them, they let them suffocate. Jesus was already dead. So to make sure that he was dead, as it was prophesied, that they speared him in the side into his heart and blood and water came forth, as we just read there. Blood and water came forth and he was dead. But they remembered what Jesus talked about. They had their eyes on him. They remembered what Jesus says. He says, I'm going to overcome this world. He says, I'm going to die. Peter rebuked Jesus for saying that he was going to die. And then what did Jesus do to Peter? He says, get behind me, Satan. He rebuked him for saying that. They came to kill Jesus, and what did uh, Peter do? He pulled a sword and tried to cut Malchus' head off and missed and cut his ear off. And Jesus rebuked him again and healed Malchus because he was doing the will of God in capturing Christ to have him crucified. Why? For you and for me. Then he died as Scripture said that he would die. Bone not broken, as Scripture said that bone would not be broken. With that being said, he said, I'm going to go away. And if I go away, don't worry about it because I'm going to send another comforter. The Holy Spirit of God. He is not going to only be with you, Scripture says, but he is going to be in you, live in you. See, that's something that has not ever before happened before. Because the price had not been sufficiently paid. Sin had been covered up. Atoned is what that means. Been atoned for. It's been covered up. It had not been done away with, washed away. What can wash away our sins? Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Amen. So Jesus died, and when he died, his blood is that requirement of God the Father that was required to not only cover our sins, but it didn't cover it up anymore. We didn't sweep it under the rug like we used to when Mama told us to sweep the floor, we'd hide it. He got rid of it and done away with it and threw it in the trash can. He dealt with it and already took the trash out. For you and for me, he overcame it just like he said that he would. So now then, when we become saved, the Spirit of God lives within us. If you don't believe me, read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Then go and uh, verse 12. Then go to Romans 8, starting at verse 8, and read that. If the Spirit of God lives within you, you are one of his. If he does not live within you, you are not one of his. So either you are or you are not one or the other. So either you are an overcomer this morning or you're not. And I want you to be, and I pray that you are an overcomer this morning. Okay, Jesus. He died. They put him in a tomb. And they said, the world's never going to be the same again. The birds aren't going to sound the same again. The flowers are not going to smell the same again. Because we put all of our trust in him, and now he's dead. Peter says, I quit. Peter was an overcomer and didn't know it. I quit. I'm going back fishing. Guess what? It's easy to want to quit life. Just say, I quit. I'm going fishing. But some things are worth fighting for. Amen. Jesus didn't quit on me. Thank God. He didn't quit on you. Thank God. He overcame for you and He overcame for me. And I'm thankful for that this morning. He overcame this world. Just like Peter, Peter says, I quit, I'm going back fishing. You go back that to that that you know. And that's what he did, so he was out there fishing. Probably feeling sorry for herself. You know how he denied Jesus three times and the last time to a little girl. Don't you know that was grating on him? Him that had the biggest mouth. Him that was first and foremost and going to take care of God. When Jesus, he says, they ain't going to get over my dead body, Jesus, will they get you? Jesus says, show off before the rooster crows. Three times you're going to deny me. 
before he crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter goes, Pfft. Jesus says, hide and watch, because he knows. And what happened? And we read in one of the Gospels where he was so close to him that when the rooster crowed the third time, Jesus looked at Peter, and Peter looked at Jesus. Could you imagine how Peter's heart felt as he's sitting out there on the boat, fishing, thinking about Jesus being dead, thinking about he'd given up hope on everything. Hey, Jesus was going to set up the temple. He was excited at the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus transfigured and he was there with Moses and Elijah. And he says, ah, oh, this is him. He's came. He's the king. He's God like he said that he was. Jesus, do you want us to build a temple here for you? One for Moses and one for Elijah. And he says, no, now's not the time. It hung him up. He didn't know what to do. He, he didn't understand. He was excited. But not as, more, not as excited as, I don't believe, whenever they were fishing and he looks over there at the bank and he sees this fella, he's got a fire built. Got some hoe cake, as I call it. Granny used to make, I loved hoe cake. That's why I, I say that, because it reminds me of my grandmother. And Jesus is cooking some fish for him. He says, Jesus? And he pulls his outer garment off and he jumps in the water and swims up there. And it is, it's Jesus, just like he said that he was going to do. He watched him die. He watched him be brutally beat. He watched him as he was embarrassed. He watched him as he denied Jesus before him. He remembered as he denied, the little girl denied him. Or he denied Jesus in front of a little girl. And he swam to him. And then he asked Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know I love you. And guess what? Jesus knew his heart. Jesus knew that he, he loved him. He says, feed my sheep. And then he did it three times. That's how many times Peter denied Jesus three times. He restored him. It makes us think of the 23rd Psalm. He restoreth my soul. That word restore there is as a broken bone is mended and healed and fixed. He restores my soul. He restores your soul. He overcame for you and me. We can overcame, overcome because of what Jesus did for us. But what is amazing and what I love a whole lot is in the first portion of Acts there when Jesus is standing and he tells them uh, he's being taken up in a cloud. There's two angels that are standing there and Jesus is talking to them after Jesus died. After Jesus rose again on the third day, they didn't believe it. He marveled them. He overcame. See, they were afraid of death. And Jesus overcame it. He became alive again. Doubting Thomas says, I don't believe this unless I can touch him, unless I can stick my fingers in his hands and in his side. I won't believe it. And he overcame his doubt and his disbelief. He says, come here and feel. And he did. And he says, my Lord and my God. He overcame the doubt. He overcame all that stuff. And Jesus says, guess what, guys? He says, I'm going away, but I will come again. He says, I'm going to build you a house for one like you ain't never seen before. He says, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. If you've come to Jesus by any other way this morning, by your works, by your deeds, by your actions or whatever, it's, that is works. And you can't do it that way lest any man should boast, Scripture says. Amen. It's only by the blood of Jesus that you can come before him. And when you come by the blood of Jesus, you come washed, cleansed, clean, forgiven, and you have overcame. You are an overcomer this morning. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, surely I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. You can take that to the bank, he says. And then he ascended into heaven. The angels proclaimed that. Yeah, ye men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing? That was Acts chapter 1. I've already said, quoted that and said that, but... This same Jesus, did you see going away in like manner? He's coming back one day. Are you looking forward to his coming? As it says in the book of the Revelation, John said, even so, come, Lord Jesus. We, and I went through all that, in the old covenant, by faith believing that the Messiah came. 
He came and died at the cross to overcome death, hell, and the grave in the world and overcome sin, to do away with sin. Is there sin still out there? Yes, there is, and it's running rampant, you hear me. But Jesus, what He can make your sins as white as snow. He can wash them away. All we've got to do is turn unto Him, and He forgives you to the uttermost, keeping your eye on Christ to be an overcomer. On this side of the cross is the dispensation of the grace of God or the church age. Jesus died and he's at the right hand of God right now. He has already put the blood on the altar and it's covered our sins. So when God looks down at you and me as overcomers, he sees us washed, cleansed, and clean through the blood of Jesus. That's why scripture says, for it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment, he said, or to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, in the old covenant, Jesus had not came yet, and the blood was just, or sin was just atoned for. So when you died, you went to paradise or the abode of the dead, the good side of it. So, but today when we die, we go and are exactly and instantaneously, the next breath is in the presence of God because of what He has done for us. We are overcomers and we overcame the world and by faith believing these things. It's our faith that He has given us in what He has done. What is your faith in this morning? Is your faith in a failure as a man or a woman? It's in the wrong place. See, by works, you can't do it. A lot of denominations, religions, and whatever teaches you that by works, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, 16 jumping jacks, 15 push-ups, 12 whatevers, and rub a crystal three times and carve this out, and congratulations, that atones for your sin. That's a lie from the pit of hell that smells like smoke and it's from the devil. That doesn't do away with your sin. What washes it away? We know the blood of Jesus. Only Jesus can make you whole again. Only Jesus can make you overcome. It's not by works. It's of faith, lest any man should boast. And then that's what he says at the end of verse 4 there. He says, this victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, not in us, but in Jesus. It's all in Jesus. It's all in Jesus. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? It is but he that believeth in the name of uh, uh, he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, this is he that came by. Listen, water and blood. This is interesting, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to close with this. Water and blood. When Jesus, well, the priest went, they did what? They cleansed themselves first with water before approaching the altar to apply the blood. Okay, two steps. Water is cleansing, sanctification. Blood is justification or completeness, righteousness that, that, that God did from, for us. Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus. So that's who our faith is in, that he overcame and he did these things for us. Look, but not, he says, not by water only, but by water and and blood and it is the spirit that bear witness because it is the spirit of truth look he says not by water only not just by cleaning yourself up you can sit there and look just as much a church man or woman or a man of God as you want to look but guess what brushing both of your teeth and combing both of your hairs Ain't going to get you there. It's by the water and blood. Notice he put those two things together. Water and blood. It's cleansing. Not that you and I or mama spit or lie soap can take off. It's only that that Jesus can wash away by his blood. The blood has got to be applied. And Jesus applied the blood for you and I and he gave us the spirit of God deposited within our hearts which it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that that is the baptism of the spirit when we are baptized into the body of Christ by Jesus' death, his burial and his resurrection what he did for you and I. So we no longer have to fear what that grave holds. That grave just holds a place for our, our bodies, our earth suit. And it's, it's where our casket goes. Do you know what the word for casket is? Do you know? The word that's used in Hebrew is hope, 
chased. That's our hope chest. When a young lady gets ready to get married or whatever, they put their blankets, put this, put that, building up for their home that they're going to have one day. That's where we put our flesh and our bones because Jesus says, you're going to be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye because this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal one must put on immortality. Thank God we're not going to need a cane anymore. Thank God we're not going to need a back brace anymore. Thank God we're not going to need blood pressure medicine anymore one because Jesus has overcame it. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. That's all I can say this morning. And guess what? He's not only done it for me, he's done it for you. You are an overcomer this morning. If, you have, if you're not, you can be. And one day you're going to have to stand before God and give an account for what you've heard. Because when you see him, you're going to say, He's going to say to you, enter into my kingdom, my good and faithful servant. Or he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. And then you're going to say, well, I never heard Jesus. Nobody told me. He says, yeah, that's not the truth. Because you've seen me on billboards, you've seen me on TV, you heard me on the radio, and you heard Wesley on whatever day today is. He tried to tell you to be an overcomer. Are you a whosoever this morning? Whosoever will may come. And you can be an overcomer this morning. <laughs>